So we should just have a couple more changes we need to do here. I think before we can test this. Um, uh, one, we're going to have to supply a map file, which I have created for this project um, to test. Let's go back to our map base. I think we're missing something here. Uh, yes, um, we haven't we haven't told it to uh, collect the map width and height yet. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, sorry, I'm on an exercise ball. If you hear it squeak in there, it's not what you think. I swear. <laughs> so map width uh, equals width. Map height equals height. Uh, start location is going to be a new vector two. Uh, and we're supplying the values for that from the parameters here. Uh, that gives us the ability to, to override the maps default start location too. So uh, start X and Start dot y. I think that will work. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and try copying over our world map file from another project that I have, and hopefully it'll work. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this junk here. It's just kind of irritating me. Well, we don't need that, right? <laughs> So uh, that looks much better. Yeah, entity list for when we do NPCs. Ooh, that's fun stuff. Okay. Oh boy. Um, map file, map file. Okay, let's see if I've got this here. Um, one moment, please. <laughs> I have a couple of them here. Bin debug. And there it is. Okay, so I've got a world map. Now remember, it has to be actually called world.map because it's pushing this parameter to our load map. Um, so it's coming through here. It's world.map is what it's looking for. So um, I'm going to go ahead and open my project folder here. And go to my XNA game bin x86 debug, and this is this is the application directory that it's running from. So that's where the actual map file, you know, because we haven't specified um, a different path, uh, it's automatically going to default to this directory, which is fine for what we're doing. Um, so now I have a world.map there. If this works properly, I should be able to actually run this. And our map handler should successfully load the values from that map file. So let's go ahead and cross our fingers here and give it a shot. And hopefully it won't explode on us. <laughs> hey, look at that. We now have a whole new world to check out. We got a little city here. Now we can't actually go inside the town yet because we, we don't have step triggers set up. Um, if we were passing trigger scripts to this map, um, we could actually uh, walk into these towns if we had town maps, of course, set up. Which we'll definitely be doing uh, in the next uh, tutorial. So then we can walk into the castle and the cave. Uh, say we wanted to try loading one of these maps just for fun. Uh, we can give it a shot and see if it works. Looks like everything else is working. It's collecting the blocked values properly from the map. I can't walk through the blocked mountains and things like that. So just for fun, uh, before we finish up this video, I can go back to my world screen here. Um, let me see if I have any other map files here. I actually created a little map editor for this. I should try making one too. Um, let's see, the cave. I'll just do small cave here. So 
So, come back here, copy that in, small cave dot map. So if we can set that as our default. That flight won't blow up on me. Ah, look at that. Drops me into the cave. Yay, that's exciting. I should just copy all my maps over there. <laughs> all right, one more fun little thing to try here before we kill it. So let's see here. If I can bring that in there. Um, this was a poorly put together tile uh, our map editor that I made. It's coming along a little bit, little by little. It, I really haven't had a lot of time to uh, invest in it, unfortunately. So let's see. Um, let's create a new map. I'm gonna call it um, my map. Make it really small. Okay. So I have like one tile set available to this thing. I'm get rid of these tiles I don't need. And this uh, little portal tile, I just added and updated in the game project, so uh, that will be available to you guys. I'm sorry, my my tile set is so limited. This is all handcrafted, and I'm a very slow artist, so <laughs> you have to forgive me there. Um, I, I do intend to add more tiles. I just created that one today. Took me positively too long. But it was fun and it worked with my triggers. So um, now let's see. I'm gonna select mountains. I'm gonna set those as blocked. Um, what was I doing? <laughs> my map. Okay. So we just want to do a little test map here real quick. So I'm just gonna um, throw in a bunch of mountains here. Just for fun, why not? This is uh, to actually kind of help demonstrate that our save file, our save map file routine works too. So there is a purpose to this. <laughs> not just trying to waste your time. Uh, big trees, I like to set those as blocked. Throw a few of those in there for fun. Um, water, why not? And a little sand. So the reason why these are shaded red, uh, you'll notice that is because those are blocked tiles. I have it automatically tinting them if they're uh, blocked. So if I actually took my mountains here, unblocked it, I could actually create like a secret pathway which could be fun in games if you have like secret walls or something like that you know most of the walls would be blocked where you know whereas some of them would be now in game you won't see the red so you'll have to guess it'll be like oh there's a cave up there how do I get there so add some fun elements to the game um, and some foothills, mountains without foothills, just wouldn't be right. And finally, a signpost. Now I could actually pass, um, you know, we don't have any touch triggers or anything working, so I can't make this signpost say anything. I could give it a tile, title label of signpost if I wanted to store that. Um, 
you know, I made it so I can save my little workspace here with my tiles. And uh, for now, I'm just going to save this map. Um, we can have it start wherever we want as the player start location. That should be good. We'll say file, save map. And I want to grab the directory for the game here, which I think I still have up. Okay, so my map is what we named the, the map, so it automatically comes up. Let's go ahead and just try it, and hopefully it won't mess up. Um, I don't need Tiny Edit up here anymore. I'm done playing with that. And now we want to load my map. Hey, look at that. So we just created a a little map in the map editor and it's working beautifully. Oh no, how do we get up to, oh, there's our secret pathway. It's gonna let me in. Uh, we could, you know, if we have uh, step triggers on, we could have that uh, teleport us to a new map location. Um, so, um, much the same way that we loaded these in the world screen, with this, you can use this uh, to load any other map at any point in the game uh, that you like, including using, you know, with the trigger handler that we'll be creating, we'll be able to use that uh, load that map handler to load a new map or to teleport us to somewhere else in the same world. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful. I'm sorry that it took so long. You know, I was really tired tonight, but. Um, you know, if you have any questions, uh, just ask. Uh, map handlers, pretty straightforward. You know, you, I'll have the project source up on my website also as soon as I can for you to download. And uh, like I was saying, I was using the source code from, I think, part 6C of the Adventures in XNA, if you're wondering where all this came from. One thing that I did change from that was this tile set. So if you're grabbing that source code, you may not see this additional, you know, it's just one tile. Um, and I won't even be using that until the next tutorial for a portal. So it should work for you still. Um, even if you're using that source code as a base for this project, or if you're just using your own, uh, you, you know, you don't even need X and A or any of that to use this uh, saving and loading routine. You just have to know what your map structure is and to load those values uh, in the right order. So that's really, that's really it. That's all there is to it. So I hope you all have a, uh, good time with that, and good luck with your projects. Uh, take care, everybody.